Hi, my name is Catherine from Crime Psych. I am doing this video now because instances of domestic abuse are more likely to happen at certain times of the year, including Christmas and major sporting events. Of course, domestic abuse does happen all year round, but it rises significantly at certain times of the year, such as over the Christmas period. I have already produced a blog which um, told you about some of the signs to look for that somebody is experiencing domestic abuse. I'll put a link to that blog in the video description below. I know that the title of this blog is a little bit odd, but trust me, it will make sense. Families will often experience more of a financial strain at this time of year. And when that's combined with families being in close quarters together with free flow and alcohol, the result is usually aggression or violence. When I'm talking about domestic violence, I'm not just talking about physical violence. Abuse can be financial, emotional or psychological. It can happen to anyone, regardless of your gender, regardless of your age, ethnicity, social standing. It may be a husband or boyfriend who's abusing their wife or girlfriend. It might be the wife or the girlfriend who is the abuser. In some cases, it can also be the offspring, your offspring as well. In 2015, it became an offence to be coercive and manipulating towards another person. When I've talked two different people about domestic abuse in the past, the conversation normally involves me pointing out that abuse can be emotional and psychological. Almost everyone agrees with me um, on this, that it can be emotional and psychological. However, some people say, I think psychological abuse is worse because you can heal from a broken bone or a bruise, but psychological abuse takes a long time to heal from. While psychological abuse does take a long time to heal from, those who are experiencing physical abuse can also be experiencing psychological abuse. If you're experiencing abuse of any kind, I'm not here to tell you that you should leave the relationship immediately. The reason I say this is because I've been there. I've been in abusive relationships. And if somebody had have approached me and said, he's been abusive, you need to leave, I would have immediately become defensive and defended him. I didn't admit to anyone, including myself, that I was experiencing domestic abuse. I will talk more about that as I go on, but this is the first time that I'm speaking about what I encountered and what I endured and went through. As I said, I didn't even admit it to anyone else or myself. So it's only now after counselling that I am able to tell people that I've experienced domestic abuse. In fact, I only managed to tell my family last week. Obviously, it's a very sensitive subject for me. So I do apologise in advance if I get upset or angry uh, throughout any of this. But what I'm hoping is that by me sharing my experiences with you, it will empower people to leave and have the confidence to know that they can survive after domestic abuse. Even if you've never experienced domestic abuse, it can be very helpful to understand things from a different perspective. As I've said, domestic abuse happens all year round but the added pressure of Christmas combined with increased amounts of alcohol can mean that it's more likely to occur more frequently or more violently than in previous so in other times of the year. It could be you that's being abused or you might be worried about someone that you love or care for who's being abused. So firstly, let's talk about what domestic abuse is. We all know that if a partner physically hurts you with violence, then it's undoubtedly domestic abuse. However, identifying controlling and coercive behaviour is a little bit more tricky. It wasn't until I sought out counselling that I realised I'd been in two relationships that were abusive. And when I looked back 
at my life, I realised that I'd done the same thing over and over again. I was a people pleaser. I just wanted everybody else to be happy and I didn't really think much about my own happiness. In fact, I thought it was my job to make my partner happy. I chose to be blissfully unaware of how toxic those relationships had become. It was a very difficult journey of realisation to find out that not only were these very unhealthy relationships, but I defended them and I stayed and I put up with it. What I'm going to do is ask you a list of questions. And if you answer yes to any of them, then it's likely that you're in an abusive relationship. I got these questions off the Refuge website and Refuge is a really good charity that works to end domestic abuse in the UK. Okay, so is your partner excessively jealous and possessive? Is he or she charming one minute and abusive the next? Do they have sudden changes of mood like J Jacqueline Hyde? Is he or she stopping you from seeing family? and friends and do you feel isolated? Are they constantly criticising you and putting you down in front of other people? Do they embarrass you often in front of friends and family so that you're seen in a bad light to those people? Does your partner play mind games and make you unsure of your own judgment? Do they tell you that you're useless and you couldn't cope without them? Do they control your money? Do they tell you what to wear, who to see, where to go and what to think? Does he or she pressure you to have sex with them when you don't want to? Are you starting to walk on eggshells to avoid making your partner angry? Does your partner monitor your movements or check up on your emails, text messages or Facebook or other social media pages? Do they use anger and intimidation to frighten you to make you comply with their demands? Has your partner ever threatened you or intimidated you by using violent language or smashing up the furniture? Are you forced to alter your behaviour because you're frightened of how your partner will react? Are you blamed for their behaviour? For example, they say you were asking for it or deserved the abuse in some way. Now, I'm not saying that just because you've answered yes to three items that happened on one occasion that you don't have a healthy relationship. Couples have arguments and disagreements all the time, and it doesn't mean that you're being abused or it's not a good relationship. However, if you were to ask me a couple of decades ago these questions, I would have probably answered yes to most of them, but I would also have added but on the end of them. So, for example, is he jealous? Yes, but that's just his way of showing me that he loves me. Yes, he controls the finances, but he's better at money with me than I am. Yes, he's demanding, but that's just the way he's been brought up. Yes, he criticises me, but I know I can be annoying at times. Sound familiar yet? Those who are physically or mentally abusive can show so much love and kindness that it's easy to forgive them. Abusers tend to what we call love bomb you. They are so loving and affectionate between the instances of violence or abuse. And I know that if you're in that situation, it feels so good when you're on the receiving end of that love and affection. I know that those in between bits feel so good that you choose to stay in the relationship. And there are millions of people who love their partner so much that they're willing to believe the lies that they tell them when they say, I'm sorry, it won't happen again, I promise. As much as you don't wanna believe it, it will happen again. And it'll continue to happen until you leave. Has your partner ever talked about their exes? I know mine has. And they've said things like, she's a bitch, she's a psycho, she's a liar, she's always causing arguments, she was never happy with anything that I did for her or that she was a money grabber. Now, what I want you to think of when you hear them talking like that is what did they do to their partner to make them behave in these ways? 
it was probably as a reaction to their abuse. Controlling and coercive behaviour is very subtle. So I'm going to talk about my experiences and my thoughts at the time so that you can see how this builds over time and destroys your confidence. When we first met, it was lovely. We were friends at first and then we eventually moved in. I had two sons who were around aged four uh, and 16 at the time and my youngest had ADHD and so he was typically quite naughty at times. My eldest was a typical teen who spent most of his time in his room on his PlayStation. After a while of living together, he began to shout at my youngest child when he did things wrong. And he had a younger daughter who was around the same age as him. But he used to say things like, I'm just helping you out. It's normal. Boys need a man to tell them. Although I, I did used to stand up to him and say, not to shout at my son, we would then typically have a row later on in that day about something completely different. And what I now know is that he was angry that I'd stepped up to him and he would engineer situations that he was able to get angry with me about and express that anger. Of course, I was never aware of that at the time, otherwise I would have just left. At one point, he suggested that we get a joint bank account so that we could both contribute to the household finances. And he'd make comments on how much money I was spending. And he'd say things like it's not normal to go to the supermarket three times in one week. Although all of my money went in there, he would scrutinise the statements to see where I'd been spending money. And... He said that this was because he was better at managing money than me. After we split up, I went to try to close that account, but the bank wouldn't allow me to close it without him present. And of course, I didn't want him present. The, that particular account had an overdraft, and so he ran up the overdraft, which I'm now partly liable for. At one point, he went through my emails after I'd been on a trip away with a friend and he confronted me about one of these emails because I'd met one of her male friends when we were there and he said that how much he, he loved Liverpool. So I said that he should definitely come over and visit and that he could stay with me. I was immediately, of course, accused of having an affair with this man. But in my mind, I was just thinking he loves me so much and is just scared to lose me. He also had a problem with my child's father and said that it wasn't normal to be friends with your ex. He was constantly accusing me of having an affair with my ex. And rather than telling him to just go get stuffed as I should have done, I tried to explain it by saying that I wanted to teach my son that even though two parents can't be in a relationship, that they can still get along and show each other respect. But he loved me so much and he cared for me so much and he was just worried about losing me. I now know, now know that that's absolute rubbish, but that's what I was thinking at the time. He could also be really lovely. He bought me some nice presents. He took me on some nice holidays. And over a long period of time, he would make subtle derogatory comments about my appearance or about my behaviour. But then he'd immediately follow up, follow it up with comments such as that we were lucky to have each other and I helped him so much and he helped me so much. And that didn't happen all at once. It was a slow process which caused me to become isolated and dependent on him. He would say things that would make me lose belief in myself and in my abilities. My self-confidence and my self-esteem was completely gone. It just didn't exist. And it wasn't until that my dreams were fulfilled and, and I was accepted onto this PhD program with my idol, Professor Cantor, that I started to realise that things weren't right. I was given an opportunity to work with a police force on a major project and because I would have access to very sensitive information, I had to have an enhanced security check, which meant giving details of everybody who was living in my house at the time. I failed that police check because of him 
and I didn't get the job. There was something about him that the police knew that they didn't like about him. So it was only then that I found the courage to leave that relationship. And this is fairly common to get to that breaking point. There's going to be just one small thing that gives you the bravery to leave and walk away. For some people, it might be the fear of dying. It might be the fear of losing children. It might be fear for your children's own safety. For everyone who has left an abusive relationship, there will be that metaphorical straw which broke the camel's back. As I said, this wasn't the only abusive relationship which I've had. I was married to an abuser as well. He'd put me down, he'd steal money from me, he'd expect me to work and take care of our child all by myself and pay for childcare so that he could be unemployed and hang around with his friends. Similar pattern, but I was much, much younger and put up with far too much for far too long. I even had my house repossessed because he wouldn't contribute to the household financially. I want you to know that you can do this. You can leave and still be okay. There might be a period where you go through when you have no idea what's going to happen next or where the next meal is going to come from. But take it one day at a time. Take it one step at a time. Take it an hour at a time if you have to. It will be okay. You're not weak, you're brave or strong, you're strong. You're not any of the things, the derogatory things that your partner has ever said about you. You can leave and be a better person and manage financially. I was so ashamed of myself for the way that I behaved and the way that I thought while I was in that relationship. I stayed, I allowed it. I didn't value myself enough to stand up and walk away from those relationships. I was also ashamed of some of the thoughts that I used to have. Nothing would make me happier than putting pet hairs or dirt in their food or cleaning the sink with their toothbrush as a sort of messed up revenge. I'm not even gonna tell you how low I went, but it wasn't me. And if you've ever thought like this about your partner, then don't punish yourself. It's normal. You're dealing with trauma in any way that you can. And the reason that I'm telling you this is because when I heard for the first time another person say that they had similar thoughts, then I was quite relieved to know that I wasn't on my own. You should never stay for the children. I've heard this said quite a few times in the past, but it's so wrong. Children will see and hear the fighting. They'll pick up on the negative energy in the house. And all you're really doing by staying is showing them that it's okay to to experience this type of thing. It's okay to put up with it and that it's okay to stay. And it isn't. I chose to call the title of this video, Surviving Domestic Abuse, because I don't like the term victim being applied to me. I don't think of myself as a victim, at least not anymore anyway, and now think of myself as being stronger and wiser as a result of what I went through. I've now admitted to myself and to other people what my role was in that relationship. I stayed But the important thing is, is that now I've learned and I'll never allow that to happen ever again. If you've ever experienced domestic abuse, you should seek out professional help. Even if it was many years ago, you can still experience post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of abuse. If your abuse was controlling and manipulative behaviour, I want you to know that you're not the person that they said you are. It's okay if you didn't realise it at the time. You realise it now and that's all that's important. There have been some high profile cases where the abuser has killed their partner. One was not too far away from where I live uh, in Cheshire and that was just last year. The wife was a bad-tempered, foul-mouthed, toxic, controlling person. She would go into fits of rage and she would throw things at him. One day she went out to check 
on their horses at their secluded farm area where they lived and he hit her over the back of the head with a shovel and killed her. And it is difficult to justify killing another person. I can certainly understand it though. That could have been me doing that. Just when you get to that breaking point of you thinking, I can't take any more and explode into a fit of rage. I mean, that's not me. I'm not a violent person, but had I stayed, it could have been. If somebody you love or care for, um, you think that they're experiencing domestic abuse or you know that they are, asking why they just don't leave the relationship isn't all that helpful. I can tell you that if somebody had have said to me, why don't you just leave? I'd have come up with a list of reasons why I couldn't or shouldn't leave. People who are abused might say, I can't leave, I'll have no money. I can't leave, I'll have nowhere to live. I can't leave, we have children together. Or even, I can't leave, they'll kill me. You should look for the signs that somebody is being abused. People who are physically abused or frequently have bruises and marks on their body and they're generally quite good at covering those up. They'll wear, women particularly will wear more makeup to cover up the bruises. They might wear glasses, even indoors, uh, sunglasses indoors. They might wear long sleeve tops. There are a range of things that people will do to cover up the marks. Domestic abuse can cause people to believe that they'll never be able to escape that relationship for fear of the consequences of what might happen. Fear is a really important component for any abuser. They'll cause the other person to become timid, fearful, nervous. A person experiencing domestic abuse might not say that they're being abused or controlled, but they might say that their partner's bad-tempered sometimes. They might be overly anxious about wanting to please their partner. Partners who are abusive will tend to check up on their partners by text or by phone call. They'll monitor their movements. And, you know, sometimes people will feel a need to ask before going out to socialize with other people. If you do think that somebody is being abused, you need to experience, you need to approach that person with care. There's, there's no point in telling a person that they should leave. A person needs to decide for themselves that they need to leave a relationship. They're never going to leave on your say-so. But you can give them support. You can encourage them. You could get them information on various websites or charities that work with people who are being abused. And at the very least, you're going to plant the seed to say that you can do this. I'm here to support you. What I really hope is that this video helps somebody to make the life-changing decision to leave an abusive relationship. I have included some helpful links uh, in the video description so you can get more information about what help and support is available. If you feel in fear of your life, there are charities, there are refuges that you can go to that will keep you safe and, and keep your children safe. You can leave and survive carrying whatever you can carry as you walk out the door. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. Remember, it's partnership, not ownership. Look after yourselves. Bye for now.